Hello, everybody. Welcome to Builder Buy. We talk about some interesting things. Sometimes somebody will have a problem. They think they're alone in that problem. They find out when there's a solution to it because somebody else had the problem that figured it out. And uh, this is kind of one of those situations. Uh, what I'm going to share with you is um, a problem that I had and a solution that I found. Monitor we've been talking about that uh, quite a few people have been interested in that I'm a big fan of. The Dell 32 inch monitor, 33 pounds, kind of big, needs to be set on a table, which doesn't work for me. I either mount it on a stand, uh, sometimes I mount it to a tripod. I've got a post here I put it on uh, when I need to fly it up over my shoulder at the meeting or even here when I'm shooting videos. And uh, sometimes the way I've got it set right now when I'm rendering my little work group area where I sit, and you'll see it again in probably another video when we talk some more about the, uh, the laser printer when we do the uh, scanning setup. That should be fascinating. For this monitor, I need some way to set that monitor. I need to fly it above the case. It's a desktop case. And if you'll notice, I've got a case right up here by me. I happen to have a camera sitting on it because I'm going to take this camera and I'm going to go around the other case where it's going to sit and show you. What I need is to be able to have a computer case sitting on the ground, not a good idea, with a monitor above it. Now, I had a monitor that was sitting on a case. That was the LG monitor with a funky base on it. Had high hopes for that LG monitor, but it broke too easily. The foot on it, as others have complained, is a problem. So what I was looking at was a way to support the monitor above the case, and I found a real nice stand that had a glass top, and I said, no, nope, not interested in glass. So I kept looking, and of course, you know I'm a big fan of the uh, Visa mounts, and any monitor that, uh, I guess is worth its salt, I'll say. Any monitor that has a mount on the back has a standard Visa mount, and that comes in a bolt hole pattern of 75 by 75, 100 by 100, 200 by 200, and so forth. What I was looking at was the Vivo, which is the brand, quick release we'd been using, had a weight limit on it, and I'm at the edge of the weight limit with that mount, so I didn't use it on that monitor. But what I'm gonna do is go to a heavier mount made by a different company, and I'll put a link up on that. We've talked about it before. Uh, what I don't like about it, instead of the metal tab like the Vivo has, this has a plastic tab, but it has a higher load weight ratio. But back to the stand, I looked at B&H, proud of those stands. Didn't need something quite that fancy. So then I went looking at Amazon, found a stand, looked pretty good, read some of the reviews, and one gentleman had a solution, and he made two modifications. And I'm gonna show you what those two modifications are with that stand. and he uses that to travel with. I'm not looking to do that because it didn't quite work like that for me. But I do like the modifications he made. One of them I'm probably going to use. The other one, uh, not so much because I'm going to go for the Visa mount. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this stand out of the box, set it up, put the modifications on it, wrap itself around the case that I have over here next to it and see if this is going to do what we want. So here's the monitor, and I have it sitting on a stand. If it's sitting not on one case, I have it sitting on two cases, which is a little bit awkward to have that sitting on two cases. It's uh, awkward to move, awkward to set up, and uh, when I get ready to move it again, I've got that other case on the bottom. But that's what I had to do, because the other case we had with the monitor just wasn't working for us. So this is what the back of this looks like. Now on this Dell 32-inch monitor, We've got the Nine Dot Solutions Visa mount, and I'm going to change out that Visa mount to the heavier, sturdier, and see if I can use that with the stand. My goal is, is I want to keep the mount on the back, and I want to keep the base on the stand, which is the silver part, so that I have multi-use of it. But one may not accommodate the other. We're going to find out. So that's what we're getting ready to take a look at. And as you can see, I've got a case sitting here, and I've got a stack of boxes. So we're going to unbox this stuff and set it up. And this TV floor stand is going to be used as a monitor stand. And it uses the Visa mount to make this work. Okay, first things first, this is the mount we've been using. And this is the mount from Nine Dot Solutions. This mount, put a stand right underneath here or out the back. And this is a regular 75 by 75 millimeter. And on this side, we have the Vivo Quick Release. I'm going to set that aside. Now this other mount that's heavier duty is Ergotron. This is the Ergotron quick release. What I don't like about it is the tab on the bottom that does the quick release is plastic, but it has a heavier load weight ratio. That's what we need. Chances are this stand is only gonna be used in one location, one place, but I need the ability to use the monitor in multiple places. Here's the brochure that comes with it. And this is the Vivo Universal Touchscreen Floor Stand. And it does have some weight to it. It has some heft, I like that. Considering we're going to be putting a 32-inch monitor on there, we're going to need that. 
Made in China, mounting plate, mounting brackets. Now these three mounting, actually four mounting brackets, are to, to allow this bracket to extend out so that it can hold 200 by 200 and probably 300 by 300. But this can handle the weight, and that's what we needed. We needed the height that could fly the monitor right above the case. Yeah, I like the way this feels. This is heavy duty. So we've got all of our fasteners. Looks like we have a wrench in here to work with. And there's the heart of the unit. And we have some screws that are loose in here. Two lock nuts and two washers. Everything's got a nice black powder coat finish on it. The nice thing about this, this Vivo Universal Adjustable Stand, is it'll accommodate most monitors or TVs. It'll work from a 13 inch to a 42 inch. Maximum visa is 200 by 200. That's good to know. And it'll handle a load up to 44 pounds. Our monitor's 33 pounds, so we're gonna be good to go. We'll get all our parts out and inspect them, see what we've got. That's a base, it's got a couple of nice rubber feet on it. I don't know how well those rubber feet are gonna last, but this is heavy duty enough that this could be replaced with some better feet. If, if this were to start sliding around, those feet are gonna come off, I can tell that right away. So we'll get out the instructions and see what we've got. Build this out. First thing to do is take the feet lay them down and you'll want to watch the bolt patterns it's pretty obvious they're toward one end they're not they're not centered on the poles so we'll lay them down so they're facing each other get them lined up then we locate these long bolts so we have should have enough fasteners with our long bolts we've got a wrench and we've got looks like an allen wrench in here so toward the rear the shorter distance versus the longer distance the shorter distance that would make that the rear and these will line up these have a square hole in here for them. So that's going to go in there with a round hole on the other side. Okay, tells us what we need to know. There's a little bit of a burr in there, keeping that from passing through. Okay, got the burr out of the way. That goes right in through. First bolt, second bolt. And I'll check this one for burrs. Not a metal burr, just uh, like some uh, dried paint. So before I put the ones on this side, this side we'll go ahead and secure. And we'll get a couple of these washers. I'll take the two loose ones, two washers and two lock nuts. I'll get this fancy little wrench out they provided. That wrench will do the job, but sockets will do much better. So out with the gear wrench. Let's see, that looks like not three eighths. So that would be number 10, 10 millimeter. Okay, that's what I need to know. Now that's more like it. We can sit and piddle with this or we can get this thing put together. So that's a 10 millimeter wrench. I'm using a set of sockets I got from Ace Hardware that's uh, the gear wrench. Three eighths and a half inch sockets and it uses the uh, SAE as well as the uh, millimeter. Now we'll get the other side put on. Two long bolts. It's one of those things, do as I say, not as I do. Don't set a monitor on top of a computer case. I've been doing it for a long time. I've never had one break. But of course, I use mostly ViewSonic monitors. Aesthetically, they may not be pretty, but uh, they functionally are fantastic. I got that LG monitor and a uh, beautiful monitor, but I was fiddling with the back. That monitor flipped over before I knew it. I thought, oh, no sweat. And I uh, plugged it in, turned it on. Uh, you've ever seen that wallpaper of windows where it looks like it's cracked? That's what that monitor looks like. Really bummed me out, but glad to know before I bought more of them. Now, all these screws are individually compartmentalized. You see the little dotted lines. So I'm going to use this Allen wrench to help me flat washers and lock nuts out. And once I get a compartment opened, I'm going to go ahead and pull all the fasteners out of that compartment. It's easier to keep track of them. And whatever I have left, I'll bag and tag so I can keep track of them. You never know. So we're going to get this side on. Now the way this base again is facing me is I have the front facing me and the back of this is facing towards you. How you can tell is the spacing on this crossbar toward the back and toward the front. Because my intention is, and these are heavy enough, I want to be able to set the computer case right here to give this extra weight. So when that monitor's there, I'm moving the computer case. I'm not moving the monitor. That's my goal. And it looks like it's going to do what I want. You know, so much of this stuff you can look at, you can measure, and you can read, but it just comes down to you got to try it find out what's going to work. And I've been looking at monitor stands for a very long time. I knew I needed to do this, but it, it wasn't a big deal to, like I said, till, till I broke a monitor. I have never broken a monitor in all these years till I had that LG. Love the thin bezel, but man, that's fragile. But if I hadn't broken the LG monitor, I probably would never have looked at the Dell 32 inch. And I'm really pleased with that Dell 32 inch. So please went back and got a second one. Okay, that's got a little bit of a twist in it. So I hope it's my table and not this base because there is no way if this is not welded flat, there's no way to flatten it. Wow, it's not too far out. Okay, so that's that part. That's the back. Now the other main part's the pole. 
Now, one of the modifications I'm going to interject while I'm here, one of the modifications the gentleman uh, made to this because he moves this around a lot, and I can understand now why, he changed out the pin, and I think he changed out the pin on the bottom and probably this pin because there's two pins here that go through this. Ah, that's where the screws came from that were loose. So he either changed out the base, which has one pin, but then you've got four screws on the top. He changed out two pins, and these are wire case pins, sport tube wire case pins. He either changed out these two on the top, I thought he'd change the one on the bottom. But to make this mobile, that would be a hassle to have to unbolt that all the time. I get what he did, but I don't. Uh, this needs to be set up and set stationary. I get for the height to change out these pins, and that may be where he used them at. But once this is assembled, that needs to stay assembled. That'd be a hassle taking that down. I like the fact that it's a low profile. In other words, I'm flat to the ground, and I come straight up. I love that. If I had been designing this, I'd have probably given two poles up. But... That wasn't me designing it. So we're going to keep going as is. So step one was to get the legs and the base together. Step two is to secure the arm with these two bolts. Step two is to secure the arm with these two bolts going through here. So when the nuts were loose and the washers were loose, that's what that was for. And this is probably the part where he used those two pins for. And I can understand because this is adjustable and you can get this to whatever height you need. So that makes sense to change out those two pins. So if I do that and put these wire case pins on, this makes this easy to adjust. Yeah, that's a modification I like. That's pretty smart. It's loose, but it's secure, and that's all we need is secure. Now we're gonna go back down to the base, and we're gonna get that secure. Okay, so we've taken care of step two. Step three has a plastic guard. I guess the plastic guard is to cover that with, so that needs to be put on before we do the pins. And that's just a look pretty thing. I'm not gonna put that on there. I don't need that. So I'll put my pins back in. I don't know what height I need yet on the stand, so I'll put it back like they had it. Not worried about the base. Okay, that's step two. Take that apart. Step three was this piece to get it in here where it would be ready to slide down. We're not going to do that. Then to put this back together, which we've done, I much prefer these pins. So now we're going to go from step three, the second part of step three, and that's to get the one bolt that goes through this base, and it shows a square hole to the back. Make sure that's clean. It is, and that gets a nut and a lock washer to the front. Now we've also got holes here on top. There's one nut in here, or one lock nut. It has the washer made onto it. I'm not quite sure where that goes. It's called part number M. There's quite a selection of flat washers and also some spacer washers and some heavy duty bolts for the mount. Ah, there it is. On this mount, there is one of those nuts and a screw and a screw at the bottom. That's where those washers with the lock nuts go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. This is their plate that will attach to the stand because the way this works, that's interesting. I'm gonna turn this sideways to show you how this top up here works when I get to that point. I want this base secured right now. I don't, I don't like the wiggle. And there's a, there's a pattern on top here for four bolts. So I'm sure we've got some screws for that. Okay, those are called part in. Those four screws that go to the top, and it shows just screws. And those screws use the Allen wrench. Well, I'm not a fan of metal to metal, so I'm going to put a washer in between there. If I had to go get some more washers, so be it. Washers are pretty easy to find. Now, I think once this, once this is assembled, this needs to stay assembled. Well, in fact, what I would recommend is these four screws that hold this pole to this base. Put some Loctite on here. Keep that down. Loctite purple. That's not something that needs to be coming loose. It's interesting in the world of consumer gear and professional gear, uh, the approaches they take to doing sometimes the same thing. I find it quite curious. For example, this stand. It just depends on what your needs are. Now, not everybody, I don't think, is going to have the need to do what I'm doing, but there's going to be enough that I think may find interest in it. Wow, those nuts are too, those flat washers are too small. They're not going to let me, they're not going to let me use them for this. So I'm going to have to go find two more flat washers so that I don't have metal grinding the metal. I'm going to do that. In fact, I may have some. Found some flat washers. Hadn't even been opened yet. Should do what we need. Parts from one project go to parts to another project. They're kind of big, but if they'll fit, that's all that matters. Yep, because these use an Allen wrench and they're so close, there's no way to speed this up. You just have to deal with it. Okay, these other two that I had a couple of nuts, I'm going to back those two back out and use these other so all four of these are the same. These just happen to be stainless steel washers. Amazes me you can order stuff online and get it delivered quicker than I can run down to uh, the local Home Depot or Lowe's and pick it up. I just think that's fascinating. Sure helps expedite time when you're working on a project. There's no way to hurry these along. Now see if somebody needed a monitor stand, 
and they wanted something quick to set up, then I would either use a C-stand or a regular light stand and then use the mount on top like we've been doing, like we've shown in the other videos about visa mounts. We've done one on Builder Buy. We've done one behind the scenes with Builder Buy. And this will be also with Builder Buy because this is not a behind the scenes kind of project. Anybody with a monitor or a TV would have need for something like this. But not everybody sets up a computer the way we do. The computer gets moved a lot, but the monitor, I need something that's uh, rel relatively stable. Something that will allow me to attach the monitor and also to move the monitor quickly to a different configuration. And I think this stand is going to do the job. But I can't see someone taking a stand like this to do any kind of a show because this just this is not a fast setup. This takes too long to build. But if it's sturdy, it'll do what we need. Because the area I'm working in, I need something that's low profile. Professional solutions always take up space. Any kind of stand you got, even the low profile stands that sit down low to the ground and spread out, those are made to like sit up underneath a couch or something. They take up space. This is a smart use of the space. And that's what I need. I like the weight of it. This is solid and sturdy. Okay, those four are locked in, and the nut on the other side is locked in, so that's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so this is all put together. Just double checking all the joints. That little wrench will do the job, but that little wrench does the job a whole lot better. 10 millimeter. Okay, that gets the base assembled. This is nice and solid. These two mounts here, sport tube, wire case pins. Now, the person that had an article on Amazon, I'll put a link up to that article to this mount, and you can read what the gentleman said about how he mounted this. Uh, the next set of pins he had, this is the part that took the longest. These little things came all the way from China. And it looked like a good idea to me, so I went in and ordered them. Uh, it took a while to get here. And apparently he's using these to make it easy to disconnect the monitor from the bracket. Well, these special bracket arms that he used that I ordered from China are a great idea, but that's what the Visa Quick Release is for. So I don't think we're going to use those, but we got them if we need them. I want to be ready to go. And this plate... It's supposed to be mounted. I put that nut on. So I'm going to turn this sideways. And let's get a view on this. This part right here. Okay, we're going to turn this around. Put this sideways. You can see how this looks. Now this allows this to tilt. Which is pretty handy. Tilt up. And tilt straight. Doesn't tilt down. But that too we can solve. So what we want to do is get this mount on here. This looks like it hooks on the top. So we loosen that nut. Hook that on the top, and then, wow, we've got to get that nut up inside of there. Tricky business. We'll loosen that, slide that out. That nut feels like it is welded on. So what I want to do is get the socket up in here. I'm going to tighten this. I do not want that coming loose. And I'm going to have to use their little wrench, because I need a flat wrench to get in here to get this in tight. Okay, so that's, that's how that goes. That gets us to that point. Now the next part that matters is we need to get the quick release on here. Okay, the Ergotron mount we've got separated. This is the plate that's going to go on the stand, and this is the plate that will go on the monitor. We're going to put this on the stand. We'll put this piece on the monitor. Spin that around so you can see. Okay, and this has recessed holes in it, so those will be flat. No washers, so I'm going to supply my own washers again. Now, my only concern about this is not having that bolted down. There's a little bit of play up there, so I may go back and put the bolts in instead of using these pins. I don't want a big monitor like that having that much play. Okay, that part's on. So now the Visa part, it locks in, slide in, and do its, do its job. Got this part done, that's fine, and the monitor can attach to this. And we can attach that to the monitor. Okay, when you get a large monitor, and you get that base on there, I've got the arm out. And you won't really see it here, but this plate is not parallel with this pole. But it shows out when the monitor's on that big that it's off by a quarter of an inch. So these are not parallel, and this is not perpendicular square. So what there, what there is is this: these two screws. The top screw is an absolute, but the bottom screw allows it to tilt to get that straight. So we're going to have to loosen that and tighten that screw to get that straight. And there is an adjustment in there. And remember that's the 10 millimeter. We'll see if we can adjust this without having to take the plate off. Because remember there's a visa mount on here. And what we want to do is we want to center that. You heard it slide. We want to get that center and then tighten it. Question is going to be can we get it centered and tightened off the stand. So we're going to try it one more time. Now that I know where the problem is. Easy solution. See now if we can tighten that screw. It keeps it centered. 
Okay, now we have the monitor flown above the computer with a little bit more space and to get it parallel because we're looking at it at an angle what we had to do was make an adjustment on the back and the screw on the back was the crucial part and it's going to be hard to see from here but if you'll notice right here on the top I'm going to point with my finger there's a screw right there that's an absolute on the bottom there's another screw that you cannot see from here what I did was I took this knob and tilted the monitor all the way out so I could reach in over the wrench and tighten that screw to get this straight. So as we look at the back of this, we now have a monitor on a stand, and there's the stand, and the computer's resting on it. And we're using the Ergotron quick release. So we have a quick release from the Ergotron. We can disconnect the monitor from this stand and transfer it to the other base with the Visa, also with the Ergotron quick release so we can put it on a light stand so we'll turn that back on and as you can see at the base the computer case is sitting on that stand And this will keep us from having to have difficulty with worrying about breaking another monitor. So that's a TV stand being used as a monitor stand so that we can fly the monitor right above that case. So we're no longer using two cases to support the monitor. The bad thing was we had to take the base off the monitor. But the good thing is we can now put the monitor on two different directions, either on this TV stand where we fly it right above the computer case or on a light pole we can put it to our video cart and the next video if you'll see there that's the Canon MF249 multifunction device it's a laser printer printer scanner and fax now we're going to be showing some details on how to set the scanner up on that but I want to get this done first and I hope you find this useful I uh, appreciate if you'll uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this this was a bit unusual and a bit tedious it took us uh, a whole lot more time than uh, that I wanted to spend on it, but it's something that's been needing doing for a whole long time, very long time. So I hope you enjoyed this. So this is the TV floor stand by Vivo that we've used so we could fly a monitor right up above a computer case. Kind of an odd situation. If you have need for such, hope you found this useful. Thumbs up would be appreciated and appreciate you subscribing. And thanks for watching. We we'll look forward to seeing you next video. Have a great day.